please rise and gentlemen, remove your hats for the playing of our national anthem. Just like Ozzy would want. Um, tonight's other TRC softball and baseball games. Manchester's at North Miami. Lewis Cass is at Southwood. Wabash is at Peru. And Whitco is at Northfield. If you'd like to watch the softball game between McConaughey and Rochester, Steve Stricker is over at Fansler Field. And you can watch that. We got that one. Or you can stream it later if you'd like as well. We'll have... We're, we're everywhere tonight. We're at softball. We're at baseball. Rochester girls tennis team also has a home match tonight against Lewis Cass right across the parking lot. Lady Z's have, uh, haven't played in like a week. And they got rained out at North Judson. And then they were supposed to play Lewis Cass on Monday. They got pushed back to Wednesday because of the weather. So Rochester Girls Tennis is also at home tonight. Uh, the other baseball game of note in our area uh, is at Knox tonight where the Redskins are hosting Pioneer and Hoosier North play. Pioneer playing their third conference game in as many days. Uh, they swept Culver in a two-game series, won two close games against the Cavaliers, 6-4 to four on Monday. They were down 4-1 to one in that game. And then last night against Culver, they were down 3-2 to two in the going to the bottom of the seventh, scored twice to walk it off, 4-3, to three, scoring the game-winning run on an error. Some good base running, some good relief pitching by Drew McKegg, and they pulled it out, but now they got another conference game against Knox tonight that's a makeup. Looking at McConaughey's season, they were they beat again. They beat Lewis Cass last night, seven to nothing. That broke a four-game losing streak. They had lost a heartbreaker last week to Wabash, three to two in eight innings. They also lost to Whitco, six to five. And you know they lost to Manchester, seven to five. So I mean. Those first three conference losses were by a combined total of four runs. And then last night, a 7 nothing win over Lewis Castro. Even though they're 1-3 in conference play, they actually have a positive run differential in conference play. All right, it'll be Eisenberg, Sims, and Shelton do against Pollock to start the game. First pitch from Pollock to Bennett Eisenberg is a strike called. Bennett Eisenberg is a junior first baseman. As we mentioned, he is their ace pitcher when he's not playing first base. Foul ball, strike two. Eisenberg is quite the hitter as well. He is a 515 hitter, 17 for 33 on the year. Two home runs, eight RBIs. Fouled off. McConaughey as a team is hitting 253. Rochester, by comparison, is hitting 278. Did he go? He did go. Ball gets away from Cypher. He picks it up and throws to first. Caught by Reinhardt to complete the strikeout. 
It looked like Pollock kind of buried a slider in the dirt. And really fooled a good hitter in Eisenberg. And now this talented freshman shortstop, Marcel Sims, a 270 hitter on the year. No homers and four RBIs. Another first pitch strike for Pollock. Strike. So Rochester's two conference losses are to Northfield and Manchester, and Peru has wins over both of those teams. Line drive right field, that will drop for a base hit. Fervita gets it into Brandbeck. Rochester outfield from left to right in this game. Bowers in left. Casper in center. Fervita in right. Young at third. Coleman at short. Brandbeck at second. Reinerts at first. Cypher catching. Pollock pitching. First pitch to Caleb Shelton is a ball. Shelton is a senior. He's the pitcher tonight. He's a 583 hitter. 14 for 24. Foul ball in the direction of the McConaughey dugout. McConaughey has hit four home runs as a team. Shelton's hit one of them. Eisenberg, their leadoff hitter, has hit two of them. The on-deck hitter is Jacob Isley. He hit the other one. Breaking ball outside and low, 2-1. and one. Strike in there at the knees. It's almost like he went to back to the same pitch, just wanted to do, just executed it a little bit better. Two and two. Breaking ball up and in, throw down to second. Not in time. Sims, the freshman, steals second. Count is now three and two on the batter, Shelton. Shelton really chokes up on the bat. Got him swinging. Cleanup hitter, Jacob Isley. That'll bring up the catcher, Jacob Isley. He's a senior, 241 batter, left-handed hitter. Left-handed thrower, too, as we saw during pregame warm-ups. This will be interesting. Ball's behind on the count, 0-1-1. Inside. It seems like that... I know Carson's talked about throwing a two-seamer, maybe to counterbalance his, like his four-seamer, but it seems like he can he can get in on the hands of left-handed batters. Two and one. Coleman kind of jockeying behind Sims. Ball three. Three and one. Popped up foul and out of play. Full count. McConaughey has scored 57 runs in 11 games, a little over five a game. Zebras have played 14 games and scored 112 runs. Zebras have scored eight a game. And Zebras have two more after tonight. Zebras have two non-conference games before returning to conference play on Monday at Peru. They've got a 
non-conference road game at Tippecanoe Valley at fri uh, Friday night at 5. Got him looking with a backdoor breaking ball. And that retired the side. Rochester also with a home game against Warsaw on Saturday, Saturday morning at 11. For McConaughey on the top of the first, no runs, one hit, no errors, one left. End of half an inning, no score between Rochester and McConaughey, and you're watching RTC TV4. Brady Coleman comes in hitting 295 on his freshman season. He is 13 for 44. Eight RBIs on the year. He's got 10 singles and three doubles. So if you look at the last three conference games Rochester's played, against Northfield they led 2 to nothing and wound up losing. Against Manchester they led 3 to nothing and wound up losing. Last night they trailed 2 to nothing and wound up winning. So, so much for striking first. 1 and 2 the count. Got him. Good. Good heater by Shelton. It looked like he, he's kind of really smooth out there. And I'm kind of wondering if there's a little bit of deception if they're not if Coleman didn't really see the ball very well coming out of the hand. Good job there by Shelton. I'm going to bring up Carson Pollock, the pitcher. Carson, a sophomore. He is a 3.27 hitter. 0-1. One homer and 14 RBIs for Carson. So that one homer was in a TRC game against Southwood a couple weeks ago. It's interesting, so much of catching is about like framing. I'm curious to know of how, how good Isley is at framing and how that affects the umpire's view of the pitch. Maybe I'm mean, maybe it does I'm looking too deeply into it. Maybe it doesn't affect it at all, but I'm kinda curious about that. Two and one. Ball three. Fouled off. Counting off full. Pollock wears one of those shin guards on the inside of his left leg. Grounder, back to Shelt. Throws to Eisenberg for the out. First baseman, Tanner Reinhardt. Number one, Tanner Reinhardt. Tanner is a 372 hitter. He and Pollock are tied. He, Pollock, and Cypher all have 14 RBIs. They're tied for the team lead. Rochester hit nine home runs as a team. Tanner leads the team with three. He's got three of the nine. Strike. 0 oh 1. Just one thing looking at Sheldon's stats, I mean, for it's. May now, and he hasn't gotten a whole lot of mound time. 1 0 record, 5.04 ERA, just 8 and a third innings pitched on the season. Eisenberg leads them in innings pitched, and then uh, Mitchell is second, but Mitchell isn't in their lineup today. Round ball is second. And the throw to first is in time. Braxton Burner handling the routine play. For Rochester in the bottom of the first. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. End of one inning. No score between McConaughey and Rochester, and you're watching RTC TV4. It's been a tough last couple days for the Rochester boys golf team. On Monday, they 
in the rain. They played Tippecanoe Valley and Culver Academy and lost. They beat CMA, which is good. That's not something that happens all the time, but they lost to Valley. Valley won with a 164, Rochester to 165, and Culver Academy to 171. Strike. And then last night they had a home match with their future TRC rival, Northwestern. And Northwestern won that one by three, 163 to 166. One and two. That's a strikeout. Torres goes down. What's the count? I thought it was one and two. Yeah, you haven't struck out, Damien. One and two. Called off. And now he can go back to the dugout. Strike number four. Second baseman, Braxton Burner. When you start walking back to the dugout when it's only strike two, that's not a sign that you have a lot of confidence, does it? Does that sound like you're really confident up there? Braxton Burner, the second baseman, is the batter. He's a 148 hitter. Four for 27 on the year. One RBI. Burner is a three sport athlete in Maconaqua. He's the quarterback on the football team. Also, is a backup guard for Coach John Burris on the basketball team. One and one. Hit by a pitch. No runner at first with one out. Burner looks like he's okay. And that was kind of the theme of last night's game. Tanner Reiner said, what, four batters last night? Cannon lays down a bunt. Pollock will throw to first. Out. Sacrifice, 1-3. Burner now at second with two outs. Well, again, uh, Coach Eisenberg... Let's see what's going on there. Umpire was talking with Cannon. Well, regardless, we've got Caden Richards coming up. He is the right fielder. Right fielder, Caden Richards. Richards is a sophomore. He's a 200 hitter. So you lay down a bunt with one out for your seven hitter to get to your eight hitter in the second inning. Doesn't sound like Coach Eisenberg is expecting a slugfest. He sounds like he's got a scratch and claw for every run he can get. One and two. Fastball high. And, I, and it's understandable. I, I mean, four of his first five hitters struck out. But it's interesting that he went to the bunt that early, especially with one out. Strike called on the count is two and two on Richards. Devin Murray on deck. 2-2. Two -two. Got him swinging. Strike at number five. No runs, no hits for McConaughey in the top of the second. No errors, one left. End of an inning and a half. No score between Rochester and McConaughey. And you're watching RTC TV4. We're also 0-0 here in baseball in the bottom of the second. It'll be Cypher, Young, and Fervida due up against Shelton. Strike one, called. Good breaking ball. 
And I think Isley really framed that well. 0-2. Oh Round ball to first. Eisenberg wins the race to the bag. And Shelton has retired four in a row to start the game. Third baseman, Gavin Young. I'll bring up the senior third baseman, Gavin Young. Gavin is a 244 hitter. He does have 11 RBIs in 14 games. Foul ball. Ground ball in the hole, and that is going to be a base hit. Sims got to it, but was only able to knock it down. That was deep in the hole. That is going to be an infield single. Zebras have their first base runner. That will bring up the senior right fielder, Colton Fervita. Fervita, 273 hitter. Two homers and 10 RBIs. Breaking ball outside on the first pitch. Shelton steps off. Ken, I don't know if you'd call Gavin Young a great base thief. But he's opportunistic. Strike. Rochester has 29 stolen bases in 14 games. Breaking ball just outside. Two and one. Nice weather again tonight, about 80 and sunny. Strike two, swinging. Another softball update. Tippecanoe New Valley leads Argus five to nothing in the top of the third. Two and two, Sheldon, and kind of, kind of varying his times to home plate. Got him looking. Throw to s is in the center field. Backing up on the play is the center fielder. Uh, that was Mercer backing up. So Yang is going to have to stay at second with a stolen base, but it is a strikeout. Strikeout number two for Shelton. Two outs in the inning. Brady Beck's the batter. Brady is the senior DH for the Zebras. He's a 278 hitter. No homers and four RBIs. Sheldon looks back. Pitch is high and outside. Sims kind of pounding his glove, standing right behind Young. And two outs, so Gavin's going to be off on contact. So he wants to get a good, pretty good lead. So he can score on any base hit to the outfield. Ball two. You know, talked a lot about Brady's coming back to play baseball this year. And Corey Good just and the coaching staff just raving about his work ethic, trying to make up for some lost time. 
Talked about his incredible hand-eye coordination. Two and one. Ball three. looking for there. Three and two. Got him looking to retire the side. Strike at number three for Shelton. For Rochester in the bottom of the second. No runs, one hit. No errors, one left. End of two innings. No score between Rochester and McConaughey. And you're watching RTC TV4. Okay, it's time to play Immaculate Grid. Our daily... Our our trivia game that we try to do every time up up here. So if you're at home and you have know who it is, feel free to guess along, and then I'll tell you my answers when we're done. Uh, first category today: Cardinals and Tigers. What is the number one answer on Immaculate Grid for a player who played for both the St. Louis Cardinals and the D Detroit Tigers? Hint: He is a current Tiger. Want to know the count to Murray? He is a current Tiger pitcher. The Cardinals traded him in the Orioles last year, right around the trade deadline. Then he became a free agent and signed with the Tigers. One and one, right-handed starting pitcher. All two. I was. I must admit, I was surprised by this one. Initials are J F. Very, very good pitcher for the Cardinals, but he's been kind of he's been kind of banged up. He's been injury prone. Up oh, the ball was dropped. The out will have to be completed at first. But, or did he? What did the umpire say? Did he say foul ball, or did he say the ball was dropped? And now the umpires are going to talk about it. If was it a, if it was a swing and a miss, and then Safford just dropped the ball, or did he drop it? On the transfer, he is out. That is a strikeout number six. Lead off hitter Ben Eisenberg. Again, it was. I was curious if there was, if the umpire was calling it a foul ball. It was a foul ball, and then. He, if it was a foul ball and then Cypher couldn't hang on, then it's just a foul ball and the count, the, the at bat continues. And I, I'm kind of surprised the home plate umpire. I, I was curious to know, be curious to know what, why, what the home plate umpire needed help from the base umpire for. I don't think the base umpire could have helped him very much. Want to know the count to Eisenberg? Make it two and zero. Oh. Cardinals and Tigers. What is the number one answer in Immaculate Grid? Pitcher J F for his initials. I think he was. He, I think he's from the Los Angeles area, born and raised. I think he played on the same high school baseball team with Lucas Giolito, who's with the Red Sox now. Base on balls. Eisenberg aboard, and you'd have to think he's going to be running here. Shortstop, Marcel Sims. Let her bring up Marcel Sims, who singled his first time up. Eisenberg has 13 stolen bases on the year, so you better believe he's going to be running. Knocked down by Cypher. There goes Eisenberg. He's in there. We'll call that a wild pitch. But as soon as Eisenberg saw that one in the dirt, he was off. And want to know the count to Sims. Strike. Cardinals and Tigers, number one answer in Immaculate Grid. This guy was, about five years ago, he was really, he looked like he was going to be a superstar. But it just He's had some injuries, and he just can't stay healthy enough. But he's got, I mean, he looked like he was going to be like a Cy Young type pitcher. 
He's still pretty talented. One and two. Then the Cardinals have like a 17 game winning streak. Was it four or five years ago? And this guy was just, yeah, it was, yeah, it was hard to watch. Jack Flaherty. Jack Flaherty. Kind of is now two and two on Sims. Pollock looks back. Crack down the third baseline. That's a base hit. Eisenberg rounding third. He'll score the first run of the game. Sims will take a turn around first. He'll hold there. It's an RBI single. And McConaughey leads it. One nothing. My well, Sims, a good looking freshman. He's two for two. He's been able to went right field for his first hit, pulled that one down the line. Caleb Shelton swings at the first pitch, popped up. Cypher throws away the mask, makes the catch right around home plate. Two down. And they said that was a fair ball. But. Two men out, runner at first, Jacob Isley the batter. Cardinals and six-plus war season, six wins above replacement. What is the number one answer in Immaculate Grid? Of course, wins above replacement, kind of a measure of your total value to the team. What do you bring to the team offensively, defensively, putting a number on it. If you have a war of six-plus, in a season, you're probably a, you're a really good player, probably an MVP type candidate. That's correct. Albert Pujols, the number one answer. Fly ball to left. Bowers makes the catch to retire the side. When McConaughey breaks through, they score one run on one hit. No errors, one left. A wild pitch factored, factored into that as well. And up two and a half. It's McConaughey 1 and Rochester 0, and you're watching RTC TV 4. Okay, next category, White Sox and Tigers. What is the number one answer in Immaculate Grid for White Sox and Tigers? <laughs> White Sox and Tigers, what is the – I'll give you a hint. He's an outfielder or right fielder. Mostly I think he might have DH later on in his career. Uh, he played for the White Sox at the start of his career, came up through their farm system, played on some very good White Sox teams when uh, I think Ozzie Gein was the manager, and then moved on to the Tigers and was on their World Series team in 2006. Brand Beck tries to bunt his way on. Shelton hops on it and throws to Eisenberg for the out. One up, one down here in the bottom of the third. And then they'll bring up Drew Bowers. Left fielder, Drew Bowers. Drew is a 250 hitter, 4 4 16 on the year, no homers and five RBIs. First pitch, strike. White Sox and Tigers, what is the number one answer on Immaculate Grid? I think, he had a, I think his career batting average was over 300. Mostly a right fielder. He's Venezuelan. <laughs> oh, and two. Got him looking with a breaking ball. Strikeout number four. Well, it was Eisenberg who pitched a shutout against Lewis Cass last night, and Shelton off to a great start tonight. He's faced nine batters and gotten eight of them out. First pitch breaking ball outside to Coleman. 1 0. Coleman struck out his first time.
swing and a miss. So he went breaking ball away and then fastball in. One and one. Inside, two and one. Fouled off. A little bit of a, looks like Coleman has a little bit of a split grip, kind of. I don't know. His hands aren't together on the bat. They're just apart by like an inch or two. Breaking ball. Ball three. Tigers and White Sox. What's the number one answer on Immaculate Grid? Right fielder. Initials are M.O. from Venezuela. Base on balls. Maglio Ordonez. Maglio Ordonez. Marcelo Zuna never played for the White Sox. In fact, I don't think he even played for the Tigers either. White Sox in six-plus war season. Again, a six-plus war season means you're kind of a, you're you're really a star player, you know, an all-star type, maybe an MVP type player. First pitch is high. You really had a great season if you had six six or more war. He's a big first baseman. Did I hit him? Yes, it did. Pollock tried to skip rope out of that, and he's kind of hobbled a little bit. He'll he'll take his base, and now there are runners at first and second with two outs. That is not what Shelton wanted to do. He want, he wanted Reinerts to, he wants Ryan, he wanted Reinerts to lead off the next inning. That's not going to happen. And we might have a courtesy runner here. Corey Good is out talking to the umpire. Is that Lutz? It is. Caleb Lutz is in as a courtesy runner. Caleb Lutz, courtesy running at first. Let's see if Reinhardt can make Sheldon pay for his wildness. First pitch breaking while is high. You see this guy doing commercials with Doug Flutie? He's been on TV as kind of a color, uh, kind of a studio analyst. Two and zero. No, he played his college baseball at Auburn. I think he played football there too. He's a big, big man. White Sox, six-plus war season. 2-0. Oh. Strike. He's a Hall of Famer. Two and one. Foul ball. Sims kind of shading toward the middle, trying to limit Coleman's lead. He's got to hustle back to the hole in case Reinerts pulls Shelton. Tanner can pull most anybody. Timeout. Pitch is high. Throw down to third. Safe. That was strange. The third baseman, Murray, wasn't really covering the bag. And Isley just kind of dirted the throw. 
So a double steal that takes the force out of the equation and puts two men in scoring position. Count is three and two to Reinerts with second and third. So a little bit of a risk. They were just making the third out at third base, but Coleman stole that one pretty easily. Rochester trails here, one nothing, bottom three. God, I'm on a breaking ball. Well, he saved his best for that one. That retires the side for Rochester in the bottom of the third. No runs, no hits. No errors, two left. At the end of three innings, it's McConaughey 1 and Rochester 0, and you're watching RTC TV 4. All right, we are back here at Bob Copeland Field. Five, six, and seven do up in the McConaughey batting order, Torres, Burner, and Cannon. Number one answer, White Sox, six-plus war season. I, I'm, I can't imagine I can give any more hints now. Frank Thomas. Not Frank Howard, Frank Thomas. Maybe, maybe that's where your mind was at, Mr. Screed, because he was another, Frank Howard was a big guy also. Mm -hmm. White Sox and 300 or more career home runs. What's the number one answer? Doesn't have to be, he doesn't have to hit all, all of his home runs with the White, just play one game for the White Sox and hit 300 or more career home runs. That would be a correct answer. But what's the number? What's the number one answer? That's what I'm asking. He's a Hall of Famer, a member of the 500 Home Run Club, and we just talked about him five seconds ago. That Frank Thomas, also number one there. Yep, I think I think he had his 500th home run with the Oakland A's, I believe. Played a little bit for the A's, a little bit for the Blue Jays later on in his career. Did he offer? No. The pitch is a ball. Count us two and two. Okay. MVP and Tigers. Name it. Guy won an MVP as a member of the D Detroit Tigers. What's the number one answer? Just retired last year. Got him looking. That's correct, Miguel Cabrera. 48% said Miguel Cabrera. Okay, MVP and six plus war season. Now most MVPs had a six plus, but not all. Second baseman, Braxton Burner. Braxton Burner, the batter. He was hit by a pitch his first time. 1-0. Oh. So again, uh, I believe in 1987, Andre Dawson won the MVP, but he didn't have a six-plus war season because he didn't. You really you hurt yourself with poor defense, and you really help yourself with good defense. In addition to your hitting, and if you're a pitcher, you really help yourself with, if you get a lot of strikeouts, and you you really help yourself if you get a lot of strikeouts and very few walks. Two and two, the count to burner. So the number one answer, MVP and six plus WAR season. He just announced today that he needs knee surgery. Plays for the Angels. Yep, Mike Trout. Round ball to third. Young charges. Guns to first for the out, two down. Left fielder, Adam Cannon. That'll bring up the left fielder, Adam Cannon, who laid down a sacrifice bun his first time up. Pollock has now retired four in a row. Ball one. Cannon came in a 125 hitter, two for 16 on the year. Okay, last category, MVP and 300 plus career home runs. What's the number one answer? Any team.
Oh, got him. We'll get to that when we get back uh, next half inning. That is strikeout number eight. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. End of three and a half. McConaughey leads Rochester one to nothing. And you're watching RTC TV4. Cypher, Young, and Fervita due for Rochester. Four, five, six, and the order do appear in the bottom of the fourth. Zebras trail one to nothing. Number one answer for MVP and 300 plus career home runs was Barry Bonds. Though, as Mr. Screeton said, they should put an asterisk by that. I had to do a little research during the half inning because I was curious to know if Babe Ruth ever actually won an MVP. In fact, he did. I looked it up. 1923 AL MVP was Babe Ruth. But the number one answer was Barry Bonds. So that is your immaculate grid. Now here are my answers. I scored a 20 today. Not bad, but not great. I First pitch is up and in to Cypher, who grounded to first his first time up. For Cardinals and Tigers, I picked a guy who was, I was surprised by how high this score was. It was 14%. Um, but in fact, he was an all-star for both the Tigers and the Cardinals. Johnny Peralta, remember him, shortstop? He was an all-star for both teams. Cardinals in six-plus war season, I went with Joe Medwick, Joe Ducky Medwick, who was the 1937 National League MVP and Won the Triple Crown that year. Cardinals and 300-plus career home runs. Swing and a miss, two and one. I went with the Hall of Famer, Orlando Cepeda. Though he had a lot of his home runs with the Giants, with Willie, Ma with Willie Mays and Willie McCovey, but he also played for the Cardinals. It was good for them, too. White Sox and Tigers. Okay, I went really obscure here. I went with Bill Naharadny. Backup catcher for both teams in the late 70s, early 80s. This is kind of my, who I watched growing up. Little floater to shallow left field, and that's going to drop for a base hit. Cypher aboard to start the bottom of the fourth. Jay came in at 275 hitter and gets a little blooper to left. Third baseman, Gavin Young. Coming up Gavin Young, courtesy runner coming in. Is that Trenton Meadows out there? Trenton Meadows, the courtesy runner at first base for the catcher. Courtesy running would be Trenton Meadows for catcher Jake Cypher. Kevin Young reached on an infield single this first time. Again, we mentioned Gavin, 244 hitter coming in but with 11 RBIs. Rochester with five different guys who are in double figures in RBIs here on May 1st. It's that one gets to the backstop. Meadows to second. Young ahead on the count at 2-0. and oh. For White Sox in six-plus war season, I went with the Hall of Famer, Red Faber, pitcher, great pitcher for the White Sox back about 100 years ago. Two and one. Gavin really aggressive up there. White Sox and 300-plus career homers. I went with a guy who played one year for the White Sox at the very end of his career. He's a Hall of Famer, Ron Santo. A lot of people forget that Ron Sano played for the White Sox. He did. A lot of people forget that he had over 300 home runs, but he did. That's the correct answer. 0.3% for Ron Santo. Tigers and MVP. I went with the pitcher. He won back-to-back -back MVPs in 1944 and 45. Beat our great Cubs in the 1945 World Series. Hal Newhauser. Hall Hall of Famer. Six plus war season and MVP. Base on balls, good at bat for Young. First and second, nobody out. 
Six plus war season in MVP. I picked the 1964 National League MVP. He was a great hitter. He was a great third baseman. He was often compared with Ron Sano. He was a great Cardinal. Right fielder, Colton Fervita. Fervita, the batter. He struck out his first time up. Six plus war in MVP. I said Ken Boyer. 0.09%. He had two brothers play in the big leagues as well. Cleet and Cloyd. But he was the third baseman for the Cardinals when Sano was the third baseman for the Cubs, and they were often compared with each other. Ken Boyer, an 11-time All-Star. 0-1-1. Swing and a miss. MVP and 300-plus career home runs. I went with a former Cubs manager. Don Baylor, the late Don Baylor. Base hit in the right field to the left of Burner. Going to be a close play at the plate. Throw by Eisenberg. Out. Coach Himes waved Meadows home. But the right fielder, Richards, hit the cutoff man, Eisenberg. Eisenberg threw to the plate to Isley, who slapped down the tag. D.H. Brady Speck. 9-3-2. Young holds on at second. So first and second went out for Brady Beck. Brady struck out looking his first time. Fouled off. Three hundred and thirty eight career homers for Don Baylor. He was the nineteen seventy nine AL MVP with the Angels, and that was the only time he ever made an all star game. He played nineteen years in the big leagues. That was the only time he ever made it but the only time he ever made an all star game was the year he won MVP. Thirty six homers and hundred and thirty nine RBIs for the Angels in seventy nine. Don Baylor. Breaking ball. There goes the runner trying to steal third. It's a double steal. The ball is dropped. And Murray runs after that and retrieves it quickly. Sims was backing up two. So it is a double steal. Young and Fervor to both steal. So second and third. One out. The count is one and one. It's a tough throw for a left-handed catcher to make with a – actually, it's a tough throw for any catcher to make, but especially for a left-handed catcher to make. He almost had a throw behind Brady Beck. Strike, one and two. So I got a 0.3% on Don Baylor. So I got a 20 today, but 14 of the 20 was Johnny Peralta. So that's Immaculate Grid. One and two to count to Brady Beck. Round ball back to the pitcher. Shelton looks back. Young throws to first. He's out. Runners at second and third with two outs for Brant Beck. Second baseman, Brant. Brant, the sophomore second baseman. Came into the game hitting 219. He is 0 for 1 today. Grounded back to the pitcher, trying to bunt his way on. Last inning. Big situation here. Zebras trailing 1 0, bottom four. Pitch is high. Fouled off. Sheldon looks in, throws. Fouled off again. Has Sheldon lost a mile or an hour or two off his fastball since the start? It looks like he's not sure he has quite the zip. 
In fact, timing them a little bit better. One and two. Breaking ball in the dirt. Nice pick by Isley. It's kind of a big looping curveball. Ground ball left side. Sims throws to first. He got him to retire the side. For Rochester in the fourth. No runs, two hits. No errors, two left. End of four innings. It's McConaughey one and Rochester zero, and you're watching RTC TV four. Softball, they're in the top of the fifth inning, and Rochester leads. Manchester, excuse me, Rochester leads McConaughey one nothing top of the fifth, but McConaughey has got bases loaded with one out in that game. Richard struck out swinging his first time. 0 and 1 here. Rochester's next three conference games against the Miami County team is McConaughey here tonight at Peru Monday at North Miami next Wednesday. With some non-conference games thrown in there as well. Fouled off one and two. Didn't mean to swing. Got him. We're going to have to look up career high in strikeouts for Pollock. He's got to be up there. That's number nine. Reinhardt's had, what, 10 last night against Wabash. Devin Murray. Strike. Third baseman, Devin Murray. Strike. One and two. Got him swinging. He's got, he reaches double figure, strikeout number 10. For Carson Pollock, he has retired seven consecutive batters and four of the seven struck out. So he struck out more than half the batters he's faced tonight. Ten of the 18, now third time through the order, Bennett Eisenberg. Contact to first, Reinertz. Just to get him. Eisenberg tumbles as he crosses first base. He's okay. Nice play by Reinerts to handle that high hop and then win the race. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. And to four and a half. McConaughey leads Rochester one to nothing, and you're watching RTC TV4. All right, we're back at Bob Copeland Field. It'll be Bowers, Coleman, and Pollock due for Rochester in the bottom of the fifth. Softball update. Rochester leads McConaughey one to nothing, bottom of the fifth. McConaughey had bases loaded with one out in the top of the fifth. But Booman flew out to right field. Audrey Miller caught the ball and then threw to the plate to double up the runner trying to score from third on a tag up. For an inning inning double play. So an outfield assist for Aubrey Miller. Lady Z still up by one in the bottom of the fifth. Rochester softball also two and two in the conference. In the dirt. To Bowers, who struck out looking his first time up. Again, I, I'm kind of curious to see how how Shelton is feeling. He'd only pitched about eight innings all season. Now starting his fifth inning tonight. Base hit left field for Bowers. The off hitter. Brady Coleman. Nice hitting right in the 5-6 hole for Bowers. 
Well, when you play in these close, low-scoring games, and you can get you know one of your your seven, eight, nine, one of those batters on base, it just seems like it's a it's a huge momentum turner. Now Coleman back to the top of the order. He lays down a bun. It's a really, really good bun, and Murray will just have to hang on to it. Bun single for Coleman. I mean, that was about as good as it gets. I mean, that just died on the grass. And it didn't spin foul either. It just died on the grass. No chance. First and second, nobody out. Pollock, the batter. Pollock has grounded to the pitcher, and he has been hit by a pitch. 0 for 1. Rochester has out-hit McConaughey 5-2. Sims has both of McConaughey's hits. McConaughey, uh, I should say, both, neither team has committed an error in this game. There were eight errors combined last night. Fouled off. Of course, there have been a lot of strikeouts. Ten Ks for Pollock, five for Shelton. One and one, the count to Carson Pollock. And they, they are not holding on the runner at first. That's the potential go-ahead run. And Coleman, one and two. One and two, outside. Pollock took a long look at that one and even took his bat off his shoulder, but took it. Two and two. Shelton. Line drive, that will drop for a base hit. Here comes a run trying to score. The ball is cut off. No play. The game is tied. RBI single for Pollock. And here comes Coach Eisenberg out to the mound. I think he's, I think he's in the mind to make a change here. Again, it just seemed like Shelton was kind of just slowing down a little bit taking a little more time in between pitches. Now, part of it might have been with men on base. He was maybe wanting to vary his times to home plate and not give Rochester hitters a read. Let's see, is he going to make a pitching change? What time is that game? At least I can. He'll leave him in. I'm subbing tomorrow, so I can't come. come so. The guy who was number two on their team in innings pitch is a kid named Devin Mitchell. He's a freshman. He wears number three normally. He is not in the lineup today. So I don't know if is he not here with the team. Why? Uh, uh, but he is. You would wonder if he would be next up on the mound. Strike called. Again, I, I was a little surprised the center fielder didn't throw all the way through there. You hit the cutoff, man, which I guess is good, but you're kind of limiting your chances of getting the guy to home plate. Now Reinerson on the count 0-2. He has grounded to second and struck out. So let's see what he does the third time against Shelton. Ball way outside. Again, pretty good speed on the bases. Again, you don't like risking making the first out at third base, especially if the, against maybe a pitcher might be tiring. Shelton steps off. 
And you don't want to risk making the first out of third base with maybe your best hitter at the plate as well. Got him. Big, big strikeout for Shelton. Strikeout number six. Catcher Jake Cypher. Jake Cypher will bat. Cypher is grounded first, and he had a single his last time up. In the dirt, there goes the runner. Throw. Safe. Double steal. So they weren't running with first and second and nobody out, but they do run with first and second and one out. And now the potential go-ahead run is at third with one out, and you got another run guy in scoring position at second. Count is 1-0 and oh on Cypher. And again, Jake tied for the team lead in RBIs with 14, and he's got two men in scoring position here. Infield in. Ball. Again, I think Coach Eisenberg is coaching this game as if every single run is going to matter. But again, if this one slips through the infield, Two runs might score. Fouled off. Two and one. Breaking ball outside, three and one. So we throw a two one breaking ball. Now we'll throw him three and one. First base open, Gavin Young on deck. Swing and a miss, three and two. Three and two. Got him. Well, there was a rain on Monday. One day and Wednesday, the conference nights. So, and then Tuesday is always rain. So Tuesday and Thursday, they try. So, day and half. Okay. Now that'll bring up Gavin Young. Swing and a miss. Good curve, 0 and 2. Boy, it seemed like Shelton. I don't know what, what Coach Eisenberg told him in that mound meeting, but he looks re kind of reinvigorated here. He's really snapped off a couple good breaking balls. Now one pitch away from getting out of a really tough jam. 0 and 2. Ball one. Fervid on deck. Shelton steps off. Ball. Two and two. And Young trying to pick up his teammates, Reinerts and Cypher, both striking out. Two and two. Ball three. Isley is, doesn't have the greatest throwing arm from what we've seen, but he's pretty spry back there. Doesn't look at much by him. Three and two. Can infield back at normal depth after the strikeout to Cypher. Foul ball. 
stuck his bat out in self-defense, or did it hit him? What's the call? Young's going to first base. The umpire put his hands up. Umpires are going to talk. Is it a foul ball or hit by pitch? Also, if he if he swung at it and it hit him, it's a strike. But it's or it's a if he swung at it and it hit by pitch. Okay. If you swing and miss and the ball hits you, it's a strike. But if it that wasn't a swing and a miss, that was a another saying he's out. Okay, so that's a, it's a strikeout, we think. What a job of pitching by Shelton. So Rochester scores one run in the inning, three hits, no errors, two left. End of five innings, Rochester and McConaughey are tied 1-1. You're watching RTC TV4. And it looked like that last pitch, it was just uh, some confusion. I, I thought I heard kind of a... If it hit the bat, it, was, it would have been a foul ball. Uh, if he swung and missed and the ball hit him, it's a strike. And if, it's a, if it was a strike, it would be strike three. So I think that's what they ruled. Umpires conversed for a little while, but that's what they figured out. No, I don't think a real big argument from Rochester. Though Gavin Young did get up and start going to first. I mean, one and one to Sims, who is two for two with an RBI. He has both of their hits, and he, drew, he drove in their run. The single in the third inning, down the third baseline. He pulls him again, and hits it to deep left. Deep left. And that ball is gone. He hit it out. Marcel Sims. It's a solo home run, and McConaughey takes a two-to-one lead. The Zebras are actually playing pretty shallow. Bowers ran back and back and back, but that ball just disappeared over the fence. <laughs> Caleb Shelton will bat. He has struck out and popped to the catcher. Puts the first pitch. Puts a bat on the first pitch, but fouls it off. 0-1-1. Softball update. Rochester leads McConaughey 2-1, bottom of the sixth. Conoqua had a second and third with nobody out on the top of the six, but only got one. Strike. One and two. Got him. Strike at number 11. Went out here in the sixth. Well, the interesting thing about Sims is not only does he have all three of their hits, but he seems to be the one guy who has just been able to get around on Pollock's fastball. Honestly, a strikeout looking, and he flew out to left. His last time up. Inside. Line drive right at Reiners for the out. Just as we say that, Isley hammers one down the first base line, but right at Reiners. So, Isley now 0 for 3, and that'll bring up the DH, Damian Torres, who has struck out twice. Struck out swinging in the second, looking in the fourth. Ground ball to third. Young to Reinerts, and that retires the side. But... One run on one hit for McConaughey on the top of the sixth. No errors and nobody left. 
End of five and a half. It's McConaughey two and Rochester one, and you're watching RTC TV four. All right, we are back at Bob Copeland Field. McConaughey leading here two to one. Bottom of the sixth. Fervida, Brady Beck, and Brant Beck due for the zebras. On Val Sitsuris, our producer is Caleb Wilson. Conference game number five for each team. Rochester two and two and McConaughey one and three coming in. Strike over the outside corner to Fervida. Fervida has struck out looking and singled. Ground ball fouled on the third baseline. Again, Rochester head. A run in, and they had two on with nobody out in the bottom of the fifth. With Reinhard, Seifer, and Young coming up, they're three, four, five hitters. And Shelton struck out all three of them. Even though they allowed a double steal in there, but again, he struck out all three. One and two, the count to Fervida. All two. Again, Eisenberg, who's their A's pitch last night. I, I can't admit he's not available. I'm sure by the pitch count rules. Fly ball to shallow center and making the catch is Mercer. I'm going to bring up Brady Beck. So if Shelton can finish the game, I'd be curious to know what Coach Eisenberg would, can, who he would consider putting out there. Round ball to third, Murray. Wild throw. Does that go out of play? It does. A two base error. Runner at second with one out for Brant back. Now, Corey Good out to talk to the home plate umpire. Let's see, is he thinking about putting in a pinch runner? He's putting Parker Casper in the game as a to run. Of course, Parker is the flex player and Brady's the DH, so they're essentially occupying the same. Spot on the order. So Casper now at second with one out for Brant Beck. Brant has grounded the pitcher and grounded to short. He's trying to bun his way on when he grounded to the pitcher. And Parker Casper's pretty baseball savvy out there. Will he be running here? Sims kind of, again, kind of pounds the mitt behind him. Try to, tries to keep Casper's lead in check. Pitch is high, 1-0. Strike. That was a good pitch. There's nothing Brant could do with that one, I don't think. 
looked like outside corner. One and one. Ball two. In that fastball is kind of sailing on Sheldon a little bit again. I. How's he feeling? Swing and a miss, two and two. Zebra's trying to make McConaughey pay for an error. Up and in. That was the first error by either team in this game. Full count pitch. Brent choking up slightly on the bat. Popped up. Foul. Isley chasing. Off the roof. Cow hangs at three and two. Do you think about sending the runner on three and two? Isley's he's put in a full day's work behind the plate. Does he got an, enough snap in that arm? Foul ball. Yeah, Isley's he's a big kid. He's put in a lot of work behind the plate. Three and two. Base on balls. There goes the runner. The throw is wild and goes into left field. Casper gets up. He's going to come in and score the tying run. I'm going to take a bow right now. That puts the announcer jinx away for good. Stolen base and an E2 and a walk, all on the same play. Again, I, I yeah. <laughs> I, again, I, I, honestly, I, I mean, he's he's a good catcher, but. Uh, he's put in a full day's work back there already in 80 degree weather. Yeah, now Bowers up with a runner at first and one out. Pitches a ball, throw down, safe. Burner knocked it down, gets a couple feet away, but that's a stolen base. Or Brant Beck. So now that takes the force out of the equation. And Bowers, who had a base hit last time up, can put the Zebras ahead again. They're not. They weren't really holding on. Brandt back there. Count now one and one. So play, after playing errorless ball for the first five innings, McConaughey has committed two errors this inning. Popped up. Who's got it? Murray. He's got him. Again, Sims kind of looked at it, and then... But he, I wasn't sure Sims had it tracked, but Murray had it all the way, so a runner at second, two outs for Brady Coleman. Puts it in play. Sims, tough play, throws. Safe. Here comes a run. No, then they throw back to third. Now they've got Brand back in a pickle. Isley chasing, throw back, out. Infield single for Coleman. Brand back advances to third, but he gets thrown out. What, three, five, two, six? And that retires the side. So Rochester scores one run in the inning. One hit. 
two errors, one left. End of six. Rochester and McConaughey are tied 2-2, uh, two, two, and you're watching RTC TV4. Cannon and Richard, 6-7 and 8 in the McConaughey order due here in the top of the seventh. Pitches inside for a ball. Burner has been hit by a pitch and grounded to third. 0 for 1. Foul ball. Softball update. Rochester and McConaughey now tied 2-2 in the seventh. Bottom of the seventh. Foul ball to third. Young throws to first in time. Left fielder, Adam Cannon. McConaughey steals home in the top of the seventh to tie the game 2-2. Now on the bottom of the seventh, tied 2-2 at Fansler. Softball. Kind of 0-2 to Adam Cannon, who has laid down a sacrifice bun and struck out. He's 0 for 1 straight. Got him swinging. Strike number 12. And he's retired five consecutive batters. Swing and a miss by Caden Richards. 0-1. Richards is 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. Richards came in a 200 hitter on the season. 4 for 20. 2-1. Strike. Looked like a high strike. But the count is two and two. Got him looking with a breaking ball, just froze him. Seen a bunch of fastballs and then slipped a breaking ball by him for strikeout number 13. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left in the top of the seventh at the end of six and a half. Rochester McConaughey are tied 2-2, and you're watching RTC TV4. All right, we are back at Bob Copeland Field. Pollock, Reinerts, and Cypher do up here in the bottom of the seventh. One run will win it. Softball is also tied 2-2 in the bottom of the seventh. Zebras have never led in this game. Pitches inside. Just in case you're wondering, Marcel Sims is due up third in the top of the eighth inning if we get there. Sims has all three McConaughey hits. He's driven in both of their runs. He has, and he's a freshman, he has carried the Braves tonight. He has been the brave face of McConaughey. Ground ball deep in the hole, base hit. Had a lot of spin on it. Lead off base hit for Pollock. Carson now two for three. Let's see, will he run for himself? And he got 
hit in the leg early in the game and they put in a courtesy runner for him. They usually don't run for Carson. Reinerts. Ball. I would imagine Tanner's chomping at the bit. I, there are not many pitchers who strike him out twice in a row. Ball two. When have the Zebras beaten McConaughey in football, boys basketball, and baseball in the same season? Has that ever happened? They beat them in football, beat them in boys basketball. I met McConaughey has been in the TRC since 2015, ninth year. Ron Ball Murray throws to second, out for a force. Pollock is out. Reinhardt's now at first. One out. Jake Seifer is the batter. Nice play by Burner at second base. He made sure his foot stayed on the bag. He wasn't thinking double play. Just get the out. Keep your foot on the bag. Strike call to Seifer. Jake has grounded first, singled, and struck out. One for three. Breaking ball, that's a ball. The count is one and one. Runner at first, one out. Bottom seven, we're tied at two. Fair ball on the third baseline. Rounding second, trying for third. Reinert's throw. It'll be way off the mark. In at second with a double is Cypher. Second and third with one out. And now what does Coach Eisenberg want to do? He's going to come out. He's going to talk to his pitcher. He just shook his hand. He just shook Shelton's hand. He's going to make a change, it looks like. Well, you got to play the infield in now. And he is bringing in the freshman, Devin Mitchell. Shelton is going out to the outfield. Coach Eisenberg wants to talk with everybody, infielders, outfielders. Cannon, who was playing left field, is walking off the field. So he's, he's out. And Mitchell. He's now in there. It's over, Caleb. Rochester has defeated McConaughey three to two on a walk-off RBI double by your sister, Aubrey Wilson. How about that? Any 
Okay, Mitchell now in the game, and the first decision that Coach Eisenberg has to make is do you walk Young to load the bases and create a force out at every base? But, of course, if you do that, that puts pressure on your freshman pitcher to throw strikes with the bases loaded. First pitch in there for a strike. Again, Mitchell just a freshman, but he's second on team in innings pitch with 19 and two-thirds. Popped up, fouling out of play. He has 18 strikeouts in those 19 and two-thirds innings. But he's also allowed 21 hits. He's ahead in the count here. Base hit left field. That's a walk-off winner for the Zebras. Gavin Young, the hero. Zebras mobbing Gavin over at first base. What a win. Murray made a leaping effort, but he just got it over. Gavin Young. With a game-winning walk-off RBI single. One run on three hits for the Zebras. No errors in the bottom of the seventh. Final score, Rochester three and Maconaqua two. And we will be right back on RTC TV four. 